You're going to need Mazayar uh, to the Firefox build and uh, Leap Motion and Oculus. Uh, so I'm going to take you guys to that um, real quick. Let me set this up. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so I'm just going to put this thing on and, uh, and talk at you. And uh, yes, tell all your friends to come watch this because it's gonna. I'm gonna be showing off some cool stuff that you guys are all gonna see. Um, I'm really glad that there isn't a video feed of me doing this because I look really stupid. But uh, so here is some letters that I'm gonna reach out and touch. Oh my goodness! Um, I'm sorry the video is a bit choppy. It's obviously a bit intense to try to be streaming this at the same time. Maybe it looks smooth on your end, but if it looks choppy, I promise it's not my fault. So, uh, have any of you guys, I'm, I guess the interactive part doesn't work too well, but have any of you guys actually worked with VR? And uh, if you have, just like write some stuff about what you guys want to learn about, what you want to hear about, about VR, and what sorts of things you think are going to be interesting to talk about. Uh, for now, I'll just take you through a few examples that I've done and, and talk about them individually. So this first one is just um, using a, a bunch of things put together from 3JS. So this entire website is made in 3JS. If you guys uh, want to do 3D on the internet, um, that's a really, really good way to start. If you already know a lot of WebGL or OpenGL or are interested in doing some more low-level low stuff, there's a bunch of other good resources like StackGL is a really, really good um, set of NPM modules that will get you up and running in a really nice way. Um, but with this specific experience, all I'm doing is taking a uh, subdivision modifier, which uh, ZZ85 wrote, and some text, and combining those together to make a really high vertice count text objects, and then doing some physics on those. I'll talk a bit about the actual specifics of the physics, but uh, first I'd like to just like go through and talk about what I think is cool about VR and, and what we can do to make it even cooler. Um, so just with this one, I think that the best thing to talk about is just uh, the idea of smooth interaction and the idea of synesthesia. So um, I use that word a lot just because I really, really like it. I don't have it, but um, whenever I see things pulsing to audio or moving to music, uh, I always really like the idea that you can switch senses and uh, something will you will learn more about the thing that you're experiencing in the other sense in the other sense by switching it to a different sense. So the ability to kind of have put yourself in a new mindset or a new position will reveal more about the original mindset or the original position. Uh, some of you guys might have experienced this with traveling. You know, you go away and then when you come home, you're like, oh, this is what my hometown's like. A lot of it is because you're able to switch positions and, and change the way that you look at the world around you. Um, in this case, it literally is just trying to replicate touch by using visuals. So it's really interesting for me because now that I've been developing in VR for a bit, the way that I actually interact with the world is different. Like when I look at the way that something moves or touch something, I wonder like, okay, like what, what about this makes it feel this way? What about like this rough sandpaper makes it feel rough? Is there anything I could do visually to represent this uh, type of feeling? And then a lot of times I just go and, and try to do that. With this one, I wanted to create something like very like fleshy and undulating and kind of gross, um, but also weirdly satisfying at the same time. So I promise this looks a lot cooler for me than it does for you guys. Soon enough we'll have streaming VR stuff, I'm sure, but for now you're just gonna have to watch me pleasure myself with some letters. Oh, I'm froze. Okay, so there's the first one. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is the hyperlink. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys are web developers, but if any of you guys are web developers, you know that the link is God. And the link is the end and the beginning, and the link is the internet, and the link is what is really, really beautiful. For something like VR, it's even more amazing 
because right now with WebVR, we're kind of in a position where uh, everything we do is more or less a slow native app. Because there aren't really good connections between different VR sites, what we're seeing is that everybody makes their VR site and then it kind of says like, hey, go download this browser and go do this and go do this and after these five sets of setting up, you can run it. Which isn't really web VR. That's, you know, using Firefox as like a rendering engine, but it really isn't doing any of the true web parts of the VRness. So a lot of what I've been thinking about is how do we actually um, change, how do we actually change that? How do we make it so that we can move from place to place in VR and make it so you never have to take off your headset? So over here in the menu, I've been working on this for a little bit, um, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Uh, basically, all you have to do is reach out and you push it in, and you can see as you push it in, you can see actual feedback. Boop. And then you have more things that you can push in. So uh, we'll look at, um, hmm, which one do I want to look at first? Let's start with impossible colors. So this one definitely won't translate to you guys at all. But the first thing I'd like you to notice about this is the fact that we just went from one website to another website, literally loaded a separate website, all in VR. This is so, 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 so magical because it means that like me, when I'm experimenting, I can make an experiment as simple as this, which looks freaking crazy. I'm sorry. I'm, it's really hard to talk when I'm staring at this color because it, it just is, it's like two colors at once, but also different colors, but the same color. I don't know. It's really weird. Uh, but it's a really, really simple thing to have done. It took maybe, you know... 10 minutes to code up. If you had to actually download this thing and it was like built in Unity and it, you know, it took 120 megs to download and then you finally opened it up and it was this, you'd either be really, really frustrated or you'd think there's like something more to it and you would try to interact with it in some way, shape or form. And then when you couldn't do that, you'd be even more frustrated. So it's really cool because once you start making it so that you're linking from web page to web page, you actually make it so that each individual like quantized experience can be much smaller. And once these experiences can be much smaller, they can also be much, much more experimental. So something like this that only takes 10 seconds, I then show it to a friend, and then that gives them some ideas, and then they start moving and doing their own ideas on their own. And you know, it's it's cool because we get to experiment faster and we get to fail faster. And the faster we can fail, um, I think the deeper into this crazy new world we're gonna go. Um, so I'm going to take us to another page. Um, hmm. I'll go back to talking about synesthesia a bit with this one and just the idea of playing with space. So um, what's cool about this one is that... Just cross your eyes. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Um, what's cool about this one is that the box in front of us is also the same box that is around us. So as I look around, I like begin to kind of understand this space, and then when I look back in front, I see this box. Being able to touch this box is a so, so weird and delightful and satisfying. If you guys have an Oculus and Elite, this one's definitely one of my favorite ones I've made so far, so check it out. But then I can also just move through and begin playing with the space that I'm both looking at and in, inside of. And one thing that's really cool about this is that I really didn't think that it would translate that the object you're inside of is the space around you, but it's been amazing how immediately, as soon as somebody moves their hands all the way through it, they just go, oh, I'm inside the thing I'm outside of. And it's crazy to be to get to play with space in this really, really immersive way where people say, like, I feel like the place that I am is not actually where I am. Being able to give people, like, a crazy sense of location like that is just one of the really, really exciting parts of VR. And to me, it's a lot like the metaphor I was using earlier where, like, 
as you travel from you know country to country or city to city you begin to learn not only more about those cities but also about your home city and to me it's kind of like because I can see the outside of this cube I get to learn and, and, and can see the inside of the cube I can begin to learn more about the system that it is and the actual object it creates and it's been really crazy because for me I start looking much 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 more like an insane person on the street because I'll just walk up to things and if I see something that's interesting I'll spend a lot more time to like you know move up close to it and say like okay what happens if I touch it right here and what happens if I touch it right here and what happens if I touch it right here it's actually programming in VR has caused me to change the way that I interact with the world and meet space even though this is definitely the meatiest space that I could possibly make. This one is really difficult to leave because it just is so weird and sensual. I'll leave you with that awkward silence for a moment. Um, let's see, are there, are there any questions that people have? Please, please, please feel free to ask them. Um, so far I haven't seen anything. Actually with some of these, by the way, I think you actually can cross your eyes. I was looking at a GIF of um, that was made in one of these, and literally crossing my eyes worked to see what it. Uh, so you could actually like see it in three D. You obviously can't interact with it, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, so I'll take you guys to the next one since I don't see any questions yet, uh, but you definitely should be asking them. Uh, whew. So, go back to the menu. Um, another one that I really uh, am really, really excited about, um, not interaction-wise, but just graphics-wise, is this one. So, uh, this normally on like a MacBook Pro renders at like 12 frames a second. It's actually doing very, very well, but that's only because we've got an Alienware with like two 970s on it. Um, this is actually just a regular sphere, so it's it's a flat plane, and although it or not a flat plane, sorry, it's just a it, it's a single two dimensional surface, but as you can see, my hands just immediately go through it. But what I'm seeing is actual volume, so it really looks like a sun, and it really looks like there's depth to that like volumetric fog. And all of that's done in a fragment shader, so it's really, really processor intensive. But as computers get more complex and as we do this, we get to do really, really exciting things with this sort of effect. So the fact that I can actually do true 3D volumetric fog is extremely exciting. And once you start combining it with some of the other tricks, like um, the impossible colors, it's amazing because you start getting things that are effects that we didn't really know about before. So, for example, when you're walking down, or at least I didn't know about before. So, for example, when you're walking down um, the street and you look at one of those sidewalks and it's one of those really, really sparkling sidewalks, um, if you're anything like me, then you just like stare at the ground or just like stop and like move your head around and see like, oh, if I move my head here, what does it look like? If I move my head here, what does it look like? Um, and you look crazy, but it's really, really a magical effect. And I never really thought about what made these sparkles look so ethereal and magical. Um, but then after I had been playing with that impossible colored one, I was like, wait a second. And I went outside to the sidewalk and I closed one of my eyes and found a sparkle and then closed the other eye and looked for the same sparkle and it wasn't there. So actually being able to render these flashes of light in one eye and not the other eye is going to do some really cool strange things to our vision and you could make it so it flashes blue in one eye and red in the other eye with this one um, specifically I'm working on a version where the actual noise function is shaped by audio so you literally see these pulsing auroras move through the system and you actually get to see those auroras in 3d like these like beautiful like rainbow sheets just progressing along the surface of that sphere um, it's going to be a while before you can do this on a regular laptop and you know definitely if you're trying to do this with Gear VR or something like this, this would be very, very, very unhappy and probably melt your phone. But 
just the fact that you can do it is really, really exciting. Um, I'm going to take off the Oculus for a sec because it's getting really sweaty. Uh, how do I change the me? What's up, guys? Okay. Um, what is the, you look at, you should look at it using Parallax or since Rift, oh, yeah. True statement. Um, so yeah, so far we've looked at a few things for people who are just getting here. We've, uh, looked at, um, talked a bit about synesthesia and what we can do with our hands and how we can replicate uh, visceral or physical sensations by using uh, vi visual feedback. Um, so being able to do that like really allows us to t like allows us to create things that were not before possible. Just this level of immersion. Any of you guys who have used these sort of um, complex or um, experiences where they create a sense of space, you know how much more you can actually like feel that space. And by creating that space, you get to like actually use that tool in order to reveal new emotions and use that tool in order to tell you more about the world around you. Um, so uh, we've also talked about uh, undulating flush box and what was the other one we looked at? Oh, impossible colors. Um, and so all these are like really, really exciting. But as you can tell from these demos, like they're very small and like I, I spent maybe you know, three days making all the demos that you're going to see over the course of today. So, uh, you know, I think the main point that I'd like to say here for any of you guys, if literally any of you are making stuff for web VR, let's talk. Um, because I think the main point that I want to say here is that the web, we get to build these small quantized specific experiments that let us explore just a single idea or a single theory or a single, um, visual object. And the more that we can actually spend time linking those different visual ideas together, the more it means that when we create one of those tiny visual objects, we aren't just creating that tiny visual object, we're creating the web. Like we get to actually like begin to string together these amazing nodes and make it so that when I create this weird impossible cube, um, I get to say, I didn't make just this, I also in some way made all of Moz VR and, and, and just by putting a link to Moz VR, suddenly Moz VR also gets bigger. So they get to say, we haven't just made Moz VR, we just haven't made this specific site with these specific experiments. We've also made those impossible colors. We've also made anything else that goes over here, that goes over here. And it means that literally any tiny specific experiment you make gets to be bigger than the thing that it is. And to me, that's like the really, really beautiful part of the web. And all we need to do is make a cool interaction for links. Um, so that's definitely what I'm working on the most right now. Um, but please message me. I'll put my Twitter handle in here. Um, hit me up there. If any of you guys are working on uh, anything having to do with WebVR, even if you're like talking about maybe like porting something to WebVR, talk to me. I'll help you out as much as I can. Um, it's also going to be a lot easier now that uh, Unity is publishing to WebGL and we're getting WebGL 2.0 coming out. Um, I think, um, yeah, and Unreal is also pub publishing to WebGL, so basically you have no excuse anymore to not work doing WebVR, um, which I just love so much. Like if anybody downloaded any of the things that I made, they would hate me so much because it's just so boring for it to be the only thing. But if it's just as like a gateway to another thing, if we get to just like play with portals and play with like this intergalactic nebula of things that we're making, like that makes it so much more exciting for all of us as developers. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to um, showing you guys some more stuff on the Oculus. Please ask more questions because so far you guys have not asked any questions. Um, so uh, oh, I got one t question on Twitter actually. Um, the question was, is there a Git repo for baby? And yes, there is a Git repo for baby. I'll post that in the, in the, in the Twitch channel. Um, just if you guys ever wonder, if you replace uh, any URL from my site with just kabibo slash, or github slash kabibo slash that name, 
you'll get to the GitHub repo. So, um, and always go to the GitHub pages one because I'm really bad at organizing. Um, so that's the GitHub repo for all the things that I'm talking about right now. Um, if you have any specific questions, please, once again, just ask me. Um, and I'll try to talk more about other things. Oh, can the hyperlinks link to and from traditional pages? That's a really good question. Um, and uh, I think that's like a question, like I, we've been talking about that a lot. Me and, me and uh, Josh and Casey over at MozVR have also been hanging out and talking about this because there's a really intense question that at least I have. They're, they're of a slightly different um, philosophic mindset than I am of like, what is the VR internet going to look like? Um, and it's really interesting because like a lot of times when people talk about VR, there's sort of like two uh, ideas that people tend to adopt. One is that of like Wally where like everybody's lying down in chairs and like you're looking at ads and they're just flashing up in your face and literally like Facebook's just like slapping you in the face repeatedly over and over again. Um, I really hope that is not the case. Um, but I also firmly acknowledge that it will be um, in a lot of ways. Because the other part of it is people saying like, oh, we're going to be intergalactic space explorers and we're going to you know, do it and this is the singularity and we've made it and VR is God. Which to me is just as um, kind of like uh, uh, was fanatical as the other mindset. I think that there's obviously going to be a mix of the two, just like the internet right now. If you look at the internet right now, there's a lot of it that is really, 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 really ugly. Um, it's kind of like that Squarespace ad where there's just a bunch of ugly things walking up and being loud and obnoxious, except I definitely would include Squarespace, Squarespace in that loud and obnoxious um, section of the internet. But there's also these super, super, super specific magical nodes in the internet. Like um, uh, uh, if you go to Xiaomi's site, click to release, I'll put it in the comments. Um, you can just see project after project of magical um, WebGL goodness. And it's really cool because the more that kind of these individual nodes start popping up and the more that they start being connected, the more you kind of find these maybe like oases of the internet. So you're like moving through these crazy wastelands where you're getting, you know, all sorts of links that you don't want to get. and you know, like for me, especially like something like Facebook, like it's there, it's a thing that is useful in some ways, addictive in others, but it's not something that helps uh, fulfill my being or makes me more happy or excited to be alive. Um, but there are a lot of places on the internet that do that. So that is a huge tangent. Um, coming back to can hyperlinks link to and from traditional pages? Uh, MozVR is working very, very hard on that, and I trust that you will be able to do that very well. And I think there's definitely going to be a spectrum of just straight pulled in from normal web pages, and then there's going to be more that like are somewhere between a custom built for VR page and those normal pages. So it'll be like, oh, we'll look for images on the page and arrange them this way. Uh, but I think that the question is, or the question is not necessarily can hyperlinks link to and from traditional pages, but what do we choose to link them to? So for me personally, from my site, there's no way I'm going to ever link to a traditional website. Like that's the beautiful part about the internet is that it puts the power of the connection of the internet into the hands of the developers. It isn't like a company that gets to say, or it isn't like the Comcast that gets to say you get a link to this or a link to this. I mean, whatever. There, that is a possibility and it's terrifying. But you actually get to say, like, not only is this my place, but these are the other places that you can go to that I approve of. Like, it's, it, you get to define the movement and the story of a person moving through the internet by just defining the different branches of their possibility space. Um, so I personally am never going to link to a traditional page unless, like, somehow it, it, it's really cool. Uh, like maybe I'll link to like the Moz VR page once it's you know like in VR and you can read the things and download the things you need. But I think until then, what we really need are like these inspirational little nodes. So you know the second that uh, 
uh, Jaume over at Click to Release puts up something in VR, you know, like I'll link to that immediately. And it's just so cool because then we get to start building this little oasis together. And uh, any of you guys who want to jump in on that and build something, you know, I'll link to you too. So make that happen. Uh, yeah. I hope that answers your question. If you have any other questions about that, please, please, please write them down. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to um, showing you guys some more stuff with the Oculus right now. For people just joining us, this is a fragment shader that um, comes from a bunch of stuff that I stole from Shader Toy. So go check out Shader Toy if you want to see some real magic. And just imagine all of those Shader Toys in 3D, just like for one second. Imagine what it would be like to just be able to surf through those crazy, beautiful, just disgustingly poetic objects in VR. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so we've done landing, we've done congeal, and now we're doing rainbow membrane. Okay, so this is maybe what some of you actually came here to see. Um, this is a project that I've been working on for a bit. Um, it uses the same actual physical interaction and say, shame, uh, same, uh, the same graphics techniques to create the uh, movement of the vertices. Um, and I'll post that. Uh, if any of you guys have any questions about that, I'll, I'd, I'd be happy to talk about it more. So if you want to hear about like the actual specifics of how this got made, just uh, post it on the chat room and I'll go into a bit of depth. Um, so this one uses a model made by Steve Teeps. Um, I'm going to write his name down here. You guys should all check him out. He's a really, really great um, ZBrush artist. And he you know, made this in 45 minutes, and it's brilliant. Um, but this one, basically, we've got a few different things that are going down. Um, you can't actually hear anything right now. But if you go to it on Baby, you will be able to hear it. Basically, each one of these white dots around us is a different loop. And as you move your thumb closer to those loops, so I go move my thumb closer to the loops, then you actually get to hear that loop more. Um, so it's really cool because it's some sort of like musical box that you gotta play around with. They hear the sound. Oh, everybody hears the sound. Awesome! I don't hear the sound. Um, so, uh, yeah, so basically as you move your fingers through it, you literally get to hear different sounds from different places. Um, the sound is the part that I'm actually least excited about this, and I've been in conversations with a lot of people, including NZ and Audio, who does pure data to JavaScript, which is really, really, really exciting, about actually creating some sort of instrument. Because the theremin is great, the theremin's a really tight principle, but like we get to get so much more complex than that. Like the theremin is one dimensional, maybe two dimensional instrument. Now that we have leap and, and head tracking and, head, and positional tracking, each one of these could be different inputs to an instrument and then we can start making something just ridiculously crazy. Um, there's a few parts that I like about this experience specifically. Uh, one of the cool things is uh, I think that there's some bad things about Uncanny Valley, but I also think that there's some really, really cool things about getting to deal with something that feels as though it is inherently physical, but slightly different. I'm turning to this back corner, hopefully you can still see me, I mean hear me. And as I run my finger along this edge, I all of a sudden get to feel this corner, which feels like very, very, like when you look at it, you're like, wait, that's wrong. Like, why is there that hard edge in the color and yet it moves so smoothly? So it kind of gets, like it lets you, like when you watch this and when you watch these objects move, you actually get to say like, oh, that is strange. Like nothing in reality moves like that, which actually tells you something a little bit more about how reality moves and getting to know a bit more about how reality moves, I think is the most exciting part of virtual reality. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. 
I think one thing that's also really interesting about this piece to me is the level of emergent complexity that comes in with it. Um, I was with a really, really good f friend, Ben, in, uh, I guess it was Amsterdam, when I first finished this technique. And to just see something move in a way that I had not expected it to move, to see something move like this, and just have been in code lane for so long trying to figure out like, what the heck, how do I do this? Like, look, what are all these bugs? How do I make sure that everything, you know, all the normals are facing the right way? And then all of a sudden getting to pull this up and have it move in this way is such a magical experience because I in no way feel like I created this myself. Like I literally just feel like I got to steal a bunch of stuff from reality, steal a bunch of stuff like 3JS, steal a bunch of ideas of GPU computing from people like Justin Wendell and ZZ85, and all of a sudden, at the end of all that thievery comes this, which is just so, so exciting because for me now, it still is equally magical each time I pull it up. I don't have to come to it with the eyes of a creator because it is not mine. I get to come to it with the eyes of a user and just get to like hang out and be with this object, which is so, so, so great, especially when you're spending all day creating bugs, just to be able to suddenly pull this up and stare at it and look at it and wonder about it um, is a really, really fun meditative thing to do. Whew. Uncanny Valley Addiction is exactly what I have. It's also really exciting that we get to like start hitting the Uncanny Valley in a bunch of different ways. Like the first time that we started talking about like the Uncanny Valley, we came to it with a uh, like a, a mindset that's like, oh, things that are very human. But now we reach Uncanny Valley in all these different ways. Like a lot of people when they put their head in this, like feel they're like, this feels like it's almost right. And that is disturbing. Like something feeling like it's almost there is so, so exciting to me. And I mean, it's dangerous and it, and it gets us in a lot of problems, but it's also pretty magical. Um, I'm gonna turn this video back on while I de-sweat from being in the Oculus. <laughs> How's it going again? Uh, so just, just for a little prelude, I'd like to talk to you guys about a few things that I'm working on right now. Hi, Martin. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I, there's like a few other things. So, uh, right now to me, the most exciting thing with VR is being able to create experiences that put people in different, uh, emotional mindsets or, um, even better though, much more difficult, like different spiritual mindsets. I think that there's certain ones that are doing it in a pretty real way, like sound self. If any of you guys have ever tried that, um, it's definitely magical and you should totally, totally check it out. Um, it has a really, really high ratio of user looking like an idiot to feeling like a god, which I think is like a very, very, very good metric for like how successful especially a VR app is because there's no way you're not going to look like an idiot. But if you're able to like put somebody in a situation where they forget the fact that they look literally like an idiot, that means that you've actually created a world and a like a, a fantasy that is coherent enough that they can escape to that, or let me rephrase and not use the word escape. They can experience that. And then, uh, you know, in a way that makes them not realize how much of an idiot they're looking like. So right now I'm like, uh, I've been kind of working on this game that's like, you uh, sing and there's voice input and pitch is pitch and yaw is volume. So it's like a flying game. So you're kind of going like, <laughs> so it's already like a pretty high user looking like an idiot, but then you've got your hands and you're knocking asteroids out of the way. So you're going, <laughs> you know, really, really. And, and then, <laughs> and then, and then there's GPS tracking. So you put your laptop into your backpack, you're walking around the streets of San Francisco or wherever else you are, and you're just going, ah, 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 ah. 
but like in your head, you're you're a commander of these intergalactic like space flights, and you're trying to like keep your home world from being destroyed by the cosmic nemesis, and it's super super epic. But just the idea of that like ridiculous ratio is, I think, um, a super super fun one to explore. Uh, another one, kind of in that same field, is I've been really interested in making experiences uh, where people are lying down. So. Uh, a lot of these Oculus experiences start with people sitting up and you have to sit in this chair and you have to do this and you have to do that. Uh, but the experience of sitting is such a different emotional state than lying down. So I've been like thinking about like how, how do we like use uh, the situation to help aid in the emotional creation of the game. Um, and with that one specifically, it's really, really, uh, really, really, really exciting to think about something that like what sort of mindset could that put you in um so i've been working on the reason that one's called baby is because i've been working on an experience where you're lying down and looking up and you're an uh, intergalactic space baby just in this you're you're in a cradle but the cradle is like these like rainbow mountains and like uh decrepit ancient civilizations that have been ruined you know centuries and centuries ago but you're just lying there and you're just reaching up and you're playing with a baby mobile. You know, and you actually get to like play with this thing that's like stardust. And then, you know, there's a bunch of other things too that I'm thinking about. Like uh, my good friends, Luke Iannini and Mike Rotondo made a, uh, made a game where you basically, for the 3D jam where you say something, you go, ah, and then it takes your voice and actually visualizes it. So you literally get to be like shouting sound to existence, which is obviously a brilliant idea. So you got to steal it. So I'm thinking you're lying down and you're just going, wah, wah. And you can just see the wah, like come out here and then like become part of the space dust that you're playing with. And then maybe there's like something else. So you like set up a webcam and it's like positioned right here. And then it looks at you and you're lying here. Your head's like this and you're looking up this way, playing with things up here. And then one of the experiences, you're like playing with these shards of glass like all babies do, and you see the reflections of yourself being a baby in the webcam, reflecting off the things, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, like look at the place that I am and the place that I'm not, and what does it mean? And then you just you know lose all conscious ability to think, and you actually become a baby. And that's the end. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's another one that I'm working on. Um, there's a few other things that I've been working on. Let me see if I can pull up this other monitor real quick and show you guys another project I've been working on. So do 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 monitor capture over here. Um, so. This is another one that I've been working on. It's not actually uh, um, out yet, so please don't go to it. This site this is just this is unsanctioned, <laughs> um, and please, 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 please don't go to it. Please don't share it. I trust you guys. <laughs> um, so this is this kids book that I've been working on. That's based off um, uh, a bunch of other stuff that I've done. Oh, this one's got the leap on it. Okay, let's see if this works. Uh, this might not work, guys. I might have to retreat on this one. Wait, there we go. Yeah, I gotta retreat. I'm sorry. Let me, uh, let me just take you to another page instead. No, no, that's cool, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'll just show them this. Um. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun with that car. <laughs> Damn straight I'm trusting the internet. You gotta trust the internet. There's no reason not to. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, I don't want to think about what's the worst that could happen. It's so beautiful, it's candy rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish that was the case. Um, okay. Um, that idea was... is gone. Oh, uh, actually, wait, wait, I know what I'll show you guys instead. Um, Okay, so we didn't look at the text yet. So, um, 
a lot of what uh, people ask. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the things that people ask about this sort of thing is like, uh, is like, okay, well, you know, how am I going to browse Wikipedia? Um, and I personally think that that question is the lamest question that I could possibly imagine. And if you ever ask that question, you should never make anything again and probably kill yourself. Um, but for the people who do, um, I think that there's, there's two parts of it. Um, I heard somebody once say, uh, I forget the exact wording, but it's something along the lines of like, people uh, say this is like, you know, like, like people say like, well, what about Wikipedia? But when we think about VR, like we can't put it into a food group yet. Like VR is like heroin. Like VR is like this extremely powerful drug that we get to play with and we get to like create experiences for other people to use. So like maybe, yeah, Wikipedia will be there, but like Wikipedia will be there without like any words and like instead of images, there's just like floating things and like you'll be using it as like a data structure instead of a way to actually learn. Like there will be a lot of weird things made. And I think for a while, the weird things that do get made are going to, uh, be pushing the boundaries enough that to ask them to make sense in a traditional sense, to have them make sense in like, well, how does a blog look in VR is not really going to be beneficial for the creation of all these new novel ideas. That being said, let me show you what Wikipedia is going to look like in VR. Almost there. Having to switch between these is difficult to make it look cool. No, no, we're good. We're good. I got it. Okay. So go back over here. I'm going to go to my notes for this talk and I'm going to go like this. That should not be rendering that slow. I apologize. So we have the ability to do text, and we have the ability to do text in like this really novel, psychedelic way if we want to. It's something that can still be read, but it's something that we can start doing these super strange things with, so that it isn't just read, it's also experienced. Um, this is a quote from Steppenwolf that my good friend and roommate Nicole showed me. Um, and I'm just going to read it real quick because it's so awesome. To such men, the desperate and horrible thought has come that perhaps the whole of human life is but a bad joke, a violent and ill-fated abortion of the primal mother, a savage and dismal catastrophe of nature. To them too, however, the other thought has come that man is perhaps not merely a half-rational animal, but a child of the gods and destined to immortality. Wow, that's true. I can't wait to read books like this and I can't wait for the text to be something that is actually part of the environment and, and become something that I can understand, not just rationally, but emotionally. Imagine if you will, some sort of like read me where you have this very strict uh, structure of text and then you get to something that is more of a comment or something that's more flowing and you get to actually like play with that text and it moves in a different way and it has like a different personality to it. I think that the coolest part of VR to me is the fact that we actually get to uh, imbue things that were not necessarily emotional with emotion now. Because the way of understand, understanding things rationally is only part of the story. This might hinder you to actually read the words a lot. In fact, if you can read these words right now, um, I don't think you're human. But when I put them in a position where I do get to read them and then let them move and and flow and play as though they are individual little entities, I get to actually play with emotion and play what these, with what these words mean and how they look in a really, really cool way. Um, I'm going to put another link in the chat room of uh, this thing called Hello, it's um, 1JS, 
www.ghostbusters.io. So it's a project that uh, another good friend of mine has been working on. And if you just go to the last page by using the arrow keys, you'll see, I mean, all, all along this way, you'll see this really, really beautiful text. And you can just imagine some sort of, um, some sort of really, really cool editor where like actually when you see an error, the error shows up as like some sort of like alarming red fractal. And then when you see something that's right or something that's like optimized in a really cool way to like give you like a soothing green undulating space puppy. So just getting to play with the motion of text is really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, we got a really awesome question. Okay. Um, let me switch to the video for this. Okay. I don't know if, if you covered this earlier, but how do you think architect architectural theory and human spatial volumetric relationships are going to factor into web VR? When the web is a place you experience, do you think will default to real world precedents or find a new better relationship to space, not limited by physics, etc.? Awesome. Um, so I think that there's like a, what? I don't know how to answer. It. Um, so there's there's I think there's like two parts of this. Um, I gave a really really long talk um, at a WebGL meetup that was actually kind of like based around this, and I said it in much more interesting ways. Could you find the link for that? Uh, I can try. When did you give it? Um, I think you could just Google like Isaac Cohen WebGL HTML5. It'll probably oh, show. Oh, that one? Yeah, yeah. Give a shout out to Kate. Uh, give a shout out to all my homies. Uh, Kate and Anthony, Cade, all these people here helping make this happen. Um, but I think that there's two parts of it. First off, reality is awesome. Reality is so, so, so magical. And any time you like start forgetting the fact that reality is the best, you're wrong. Like the rendering engine on like any of the trees that you've ever seen just like makes everything else look dumb. Like makes like the entire like server rooms filled with GPUs just like for rendering one individual frame. It makes that look stupid. But we get to do things that we can't necessarily do in reality. And that's where we actually get to begin to shine. There are certain things that are really, really exciting. Like being able to reach down and like pick something up, like with the leap is like really, really exciting. But the leap also is dumb compared to your actual hands. Like your hands are super, super magical and super dexterous and I can go you know, and it works perfectly, and I can go, and it also works perfectly. Like, it's really, 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 really powerful that we have these things and can use them in reality. So, we're never, 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 never going to actually be as good as reality. So, I think what that comes down to is, A, steal from reality when you can. Like reality has really good ideas, and you can see this with like Boston Dynamics. Like all they're doing is biomimicry. When you when you when you see like you know the design for the cars or the way that Velcro works or all these different things, like we're stealing from nature and we're getting really proficient at that. Um, but if there is a limitation in nature, like physics, we don't need to listen to it. We need to think about how we're going to break it, and we need to be very, 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 very conscious of how we break those things, uh, but we can. So, um, and even in the way that we break those, we can kind of think about the way that we do it in reality. So if you think about like me pointing to a star way up in the sky, I'm not actually ever able to touch that star, but if I, I can somehow like understand the relationship of what I'm pointing at, I get to do this like superpower thing where I like, you know, point my hand towards the star I want, and then I grab it. And we've actually done this with the VR planetarium, which a lot of really tight UX designers are working on. Um, is there a uh, is there a link to the other stuff that's been recorded that Jody talks on? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So just check out the rest of the Twitch stream. We've got a really brilliant uh, interaction designer, Jody, um, who has come up with a lot of these really good ideas. And if you have any questions, ask her about them because this especially is something that she's super fascinated in, like, you know, file systems that actually give you information with their 3D structure, that sort of thing. Um, but I think that for me, one thing that I'm kind of toying with currently, and it's, um, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I've made like one or two demos with it, and it seems uh, like it could work, but 
I don't know yet, um, is the idea of somehow combining those two. So like, I want to be able to interact with something very far away, but I can't get there. Is there some way for me to uh, reconsider the relationship between distance and the way of interacting and make it so I can both interact in a physical way and in a way that lets me touch things that are far away. So uh, one sort of thing that I've been working on is you like move your finger around and then when it slows down, a button appears in front of your finger and you can just go and touch that button. But the button does a ray cast to however far away you are. So you get to actually both physically interact with an object, go boom, and like get all that sort of haptic or, or, or synesthetic haptic feedback that you get when you like slowly start pressing into that. But the thing that you're interacting with is a far way away. So I think that we do have to completely reconsider everything um, in response to that question. But um, I also think, think that like as we do that, we need to be building off all of these other places. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting when you like look at like um, – uh, somebody once gave me a book of, oh man, I forgot what it's called. It's like geom it's like talking about the geometry of dance and how like if you stretch your arms all the way out, like there's a certain radius that you'll have. And I forget uh, just about everything about that. Um, I think it might be L-A-B-A-N. Um, but it's talking about like geometry and dance and like our physical structures. And I think that the more we're able to look at different fields and, and, and talk with them and think about the way that they've dealt with these questions and sort of um, thought about these questions, the more we're going to be able to like press it in really magical ways. Um, one last thing that I'll say about that is a very specific example. So um, if you, any of you guys um, do UX sort of things, you've probably heard of this thing called Fitz Law. And Fitz Law basically says, uh, the time it takes to get from one button to another button is dependent on their distance apart from each other and the size of the button. So really big buttons really close together are much easier to move in between than really small buttons really far apart. Um, so it's it's a really cool way and, it, and it's led to a lot of amazing things. You know, you look at like these new things that have really large hit targets that are much nicer to like click on and do stuff with. Um, it's extremely helpful. But if you're only able to think about how to minimize that specific law, it might stop you from thinking of certain like wrinkles and in interaction time. So like if you think like, oh, what's the distance from here to here, you know, and you never go, well, what if I move them together? Like you, you're trapped inside a specific way of thought that maybe is not a law or a rule that applies to this new space. So. Uh, you know, for example, like what if instead of moving up here to get to a menu, I just go boom and then the menu's right in my arm. What if instead of like moving to an, a menu, I just like draw a circle and there's my menu. Like there's all these ways that we get to start thinking outside of that one specific law and not letting that actually hinder us. Um, that's the last thing about that part. Um, uh, okay, other questions. Let's see. We got a lot of good. Thanks for thanks for talking so much, guys. This is really really cool to see you guys talking here. It's really exciting that people are watching. Um, the name in the file systems. What's the name with the file? Oh, Jody. Um, I'll type her name oh, in there. Could you could you think? Okay, sweet. A um, little off topic of what VR gear VR. Um, so I think that uh, your best bet as far as those. I think that. Uh, people will be solving that. I think the biggest question is like uh, understanding like what the interactions look like for that and how um, you know how they work with other web VR things. I think that the really cool part about web VR is that it's something like the point of the web is that it works across platforms and it's going to work across Samsung, it's going to work across, you know, Google Cardboard, it's going to work across Morpheus, it's going, it's going to have to work across all these other things that are coming out. Um, and so I think that, like, our task as web developers is maybe more, um, like, yes, if, if you can help make that happen, if you're intelligent enough to make that happen, please, please, please do, because I most definitely am not. But I do think that exploring ways to get... Um, like exploring different systems of interaction for these different uh, platforms and seeing how they align, I think is maybe slightly 
more feasible in the short term because you can like explore interaction with Oculus and think like how do I click on a link with an Oculus and that's doable right now. Um, but to make uh, Gear VR work, that's definitely really uh, not something that I'd be able to do. But I do think that Gear VR is obviously magical. You know, like when we talk about like VR, like one of the most amazing things that I can imagine is just, like lying in a park and like having some sort of keyboard in each of my hands, like maybe little stress balls that I'm just going, and then just like lying down and just being able to have the v Gear VR on, just like code for a bit and then take it off and then take a nap and then put it back on and then lean over and, and there's a little puppy next to you and just comes up and licks your face. Like, it would be so cool if the, you know, time between coding and getting licked by a puppy in the face was smaller. And I think that's what's really, really magical about Gear VR. <laughs> um, let's see. I want to make sure there's no more questions over here. Cool. Uh, thanks for all the nice words, Natalie. You're the best. Um, okay, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, I've got one more thing in here, I believe. Um, so sorry about not getting to see my beautiful face. Uh oh. Do, 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 do. Okay. So the last one I have is this, and just FYI, this might make some really loud, obnoxious noises, so I apologize in advance for this. Okay, you guys ready? So, um, this one's really cool because this is actually the same exact interaction method that I have for the links. But it's something that I gotta do after like making all of these specific interactions for the links, being able to then all of a sudden switch and use that for something completely different is super, super, super exciting. And it means that like, it, it, I think that the, one of the coolest parts about the internet and with these small experiences is that it's much less likely for something you create to be lost. It's much, much more likely that the thing you create will be seen by a few people and might just inspire, you know, one out of 10,000 people. And of those one out of 10,000 people who are inspired, like maybe one of the, one out of 10,000 of those will actually like do something with it. But being able to put something on the internet and have people move quickly from one place to another place to another place will make it so that we actually get to experience a full net. So just real quick as a kind of finale, I'm just going to like move as quickly as I can between these things. Just to say like, hey, look, I'm on the internet. You know, look, mom, I know how to use a computer kind of. This shouldn't be freezing. That's not my fault. I really hope this works. So just remember anything that you guys make in WebVR, I'd be happy to link to from here. And anytime you make something in WebVR, feel free to link this to this in it. Um, hey Isaac, yeah. is there any chance on releasing a Bluetooth connected leap? Uh, that is not a question that I know how to answer. Shmaybe? Shmaybe. Can you write shmaybe? <laughs> <laughs> Can you spell shmaybe? Okay. So, whoa. Um, I'm glad you guys got to be here for this. Um, whoa, that looks so cool. Here, just for your satisfaction, this is what I've looked like. Ah, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, thanks for showing up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll um stay and answer for a bit. And uh, yeah, you guys are all really, really cool. 
Thanks for coming through. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Tuesday. What do I do? I close this no, now? No. Every Tuesday. Every tu oh, oh, every Tuesday, 5 p.m., come check us out. We do in these talks, and it's going to be awesome. And if you guys have any, like, requests for talks or anything you want to get seen done, please, please send them our way. We're really interested in, like, talking about VR. Athlete Motion. Athlete Motion. On Twitter. Hit up Athlete Motion on Twitter. <laughs> I've been told. Uh, but, yeah, if you guys have any questions, if there's anything you guys want to see done, if there's anything, any questions you have for me, please hit me up on Twitter, not Athlete Motion. I mean, at Kabibo, not the, it's not at, at, never mind. Um, and then, uh, yeah, thanks for showing up. Uh, you guys are the best. It's because of really, really cool people like you that I make things. And uh, your definition of puppies is extremely nearsighted. Everything I make is a puppy. Everything. Everything. Everything.